Amen. Thanksgiving is over, but giving thanks is not. If you're thankful, you can't be bitter. It's amazing how much stuff changes when you focus on what, what to be thankful for. You guys like my little picture on the front of the bulletin? Anybody don't have a bulletin? That's, that's pretty awesome, huh? That's pretty awesome. A lot of us were kicked back Thanksgiving, you know. One of the things I've found is if you're thankful, you can't be hateful. You know, if you're hateful, you're not grateful, right? I think that if we spend more time think, thinking about the things in our life that are positive, guys, we would have to be pretty self-centered to focus in on whatever negative has to be there, you know? So, if you open your bulletins, I've told you many times that there are no mistakes in this Bible. There have been denominations divide over that simple thing they call inerrancy of the Word of God. There are no errors in here. And, and so I started today with a scripture uh, in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 16 and 17. All Scripture, New Testament, Old Testament, all script, everything in this book is true and valuable to each and every one of us. All Scripture is God breathed. You know, you'll have people tell you all the time, "Well, that was written by men." Well, yeah, by God's direction. Not one word is out of place because God was guiding, well, I would say the pen, but, you know, whatever they're writing with. So there's no mistakes because God said so. All scripture is God breathed and is useful for teaching. That's why we stay so close to it here. Rebuking, when something goes wrong, we get a spanking. Right? Correcting, sometimes we get off course a little bit. It brings us right back where we're supposed to be. And training in righteousness, doing the right thing. If we apply this book to our lives, we're going to be doing the right thing. Right? And why, why is that? So that the man of God or woman of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. Now, what is this good work stuff? When God saved you, he set you apart for good works. And that means you have a ministry from the day you get saved. And God has equipped you to do the ministry that he gave you, whatever that is. A lot of people just go on and just kind of coast through this Christian life, but God's got something for every one of us to do. You know, I tell you, I was sitting in this morning thinking, man, I love rednecks. <laughs> you know, 15 years ago, I didn't even know what one was. <laughs> and then we come to Georgia. And I was blown away. I felt like I was in a foreign land. I was in the mission field. Well, we're all in the mission field, right? But then God brings people into my life that make me shake my head. David's one. <laughs> he ain't out there standing on a corner hollering scripture. 
but he's living it. You see, there's no facade. Mike's another one. It tells it like it is. You can look at his life, and he may not even notice it, but he is motivated toward things of God and doing the right thing and, and supporting uh, ministry, uh, engaging in ministry, doing ministry to an honor God by the talent that God gave him. You know, and don't pull no punches. You know, he even spits in the barn. <laughs> he even went out and got a whole bunch of shaving so you couldn't tell it. <laughs> you know, but and then, and then there's there's Larry. Man, I got only made one Larry. <laughs> he go out and sit all day long freezing in a deer blind and come back happy and not getting anything. <laughs> I don't get it. <laughs> you know how much time when you're sitting in deer blind you have to communicate with God and what a lot. A lot. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Yeah. <clears throat> Seems like to be a lot of less expensive ways to get by yourself with <laughs> but guys I God has given me a real love for rednecks you know I mean it's been driving me hard for the last 10 years and I didn't know what it was about you know then God starts bringing me you guys as genuine as it gets. Wouldn't it be neat if if all people who say that they're Christians didn't have any hidden agendas? You know. Jesus didn't have any hidden agendas, but he had enemies. Why? Because he didn't have any hidden agenda. He just told it like it is. And nowadays people are offended. Of course, the scripture even says that the world is offended by the scriptures. They don't understand it. They can't. Only, the only people that can understand it are those who are saved and have the Holy Spirit living inside. And so, guys, I, I would love it if God would just let me stay here until the end. You know, I, I feel like there ain't no other place I'd rather be in right here with you guys working out in the barn <laughs> boy if the old boys could see me now <laughs> I don't have Harley's tore apart all around me but I sure I sure got all, all kind of other stuff you know building horse stalls and stuff <coughs> who'd have thunk but I'm grateful you know I, I can have a whole lot of nice things but I'm grateful for being here with you with y'all <laughs> you know the funny thing is is a lot of my friends on the west coast they they listen to these videos that we post right and uh even when i went back to work on judy's mom's house said, kenny why are you talking like that i'm going because <laughs> you know i mean i'm not as advanced as you guys but i'm a whole lot different than la you know <laughs> But we need to be grateful for our family, you know, I tell you. I, I, I love having family without fistfights. Because, you know, in my life, you would go to a fistfight and a family reunion would break out. You know what I mean? Yeah. It, that's just the way it was. But now, you guys, I get to love you guys, you love me. Man, I can't see it and get much gooder than that. You know, one of the songs that we sang today was about that country picker. Whew. Man, I like that. I do, you know. That kind of reminds me of what it will be like or if we get a picker up here, you know, singing and kind of like Billy, but a little more country. 
So we all have ministry that God has assigned to each one of us. And it may be just what God prompts us to do without us even realizing it, you know. Caring for other people. That's not the way of the world. The way of the world is putting a thumb down on people, right? But we get to do it because God loves us. And we get to love others because of what he has poured into us. I'm grateful. I'm thankful. Every day, not just Thanksgiving. Every day. Man, I had a major victory yesterday out in the shop. I've been building this El Camino for Judy now for quite a while. And I've been struggling with the rear brakes. Hard to find parts for this. Because I put a rear end in it, it didn't belong in it. And so I've been struggling because I couldn't find the parts for months and months now. And finally yesterday it all came together. You know, I, I'm laying there on the ground underneath this, in the chassis, putting stuff together. Mike says, man, if I got down on the ground like that, I wouldn't be able to get up. <laughs> I said, well, there's going to be a lot of grunting when I get up, but I'm going to get up out of here, you know. But I was so happy that that victory. And guys, we have victories in our life all the time. You know, uh, most of us in here are healthy. There's a lot of people out there that are not. We should be thankful. Thankful for what we have. And Thanksgiving is a state of mind. First Chronicles 16. It's a psalm of David. I'm encouraged any time that I read what David has written because he was a scoundrel like me and God used him in a mighty way right? even though he fell short there's a, a lesson in there for us even though we fall short God will still use us man you know, a lot of times we read the scriptures and stuff about all these these spiritual champions and stuff, but David, wow. I, I just want to be known as a man after God's own heart, even with my imperfections. And God proves it to be true in his word. Because of what Jesus did, we are now champions for God, even though we don't feel like it. I'm grateful. I really am. I don't, I don't cower back at all because of what I was saved out of. I just go forward because God has delivered me from that. He's the only one that I need to impress. And I don't even really need to do that. But because the world has condemned me, that's okay. The world condemned Jesus. You know? I mean, the one we look to for for how we live our lives, the world condemned him. How much more so are they going to condemn us? Come on, man. And so David says, give thanks to the Lord. Call on his name. Be prayerful, guys. Talk to him all day long. You don't have to bow your head, close your eyes to talk to him. Just talk to him. You know, it doesn't matter what other people think when they're you're sitting in a car by yourself talking. It doesn't matter. Talk to him. Thank him. I was sure thankful when I finished them breaks yesterday. Whew. A sigh of relief because of me not knowing if I was gonna get her done. You know? Make known among the nations. So that means that that's an action. It's something for us to do. What he has, has done. This is great. We don't need to tell people what he will do. By our testimony, we can tell people without question what he has done. 
You see. I once was this and now I'm this. I once was lost, now I'm going to heaven. What a powerful testimony. You know, churches want me to come and give my testimony. I said, what? It's the same as everybody else's. I was going to hell and now I ain't. It, let's, let's just boil it down to that, guys, right? We don't need to glorify Satan over how he had hold of us before. I was once lost, now I'm not. And it's so simple to get off that pathway to hell and get on the stairway of it to heaven. Yep. It's just so easy. Mm -hmm. But people seem to want to make it hard. Yep. You don't need to go to classes. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you don't need to do that. You just simply need to pray and surrender yourself to him. That's it. That's it. You don't have to be a, a theologian. You know, Jesus loves me, this I know. All that other stuff got to go. Yep. You know, it is, let's keep it simple. Let's just love each other, lift each other up when we start stumbling, you know, and build up our body. We have to build up our body before we can build up anybody outside of here. Yep. We got to be strong here, right? Verse 9, sing to him. It was great this morning. You know, singing those songs of thanksgiving and stuff and praising him. Uh, because that's what we're supposed to be doing, right? Sing praise to him. Tell of all his wonderful acts. Glory in his holy name. That's something that we do. We just bask in it. Soak it all up, right? Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Rejoice. You can't be bitter if you're rejoicing. Even when stuff goes bad, you know? Uh, in my life, if, if I have some, uh, if my car breaks down, blows up the motor, I'm thankful that I have a car to blow up the motor in. A lot of people out there don't have a car. And I'm grateful that God has given me a little bit of me mechanical knowledge so I can fix the darn thing. Thankful. And if I couldn't fix it, I'd be thankful that God would have somebody in my life who could, right? Glory in his name, in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Because the ones that don't seek him have no reason to rejoice. They can't go through trials without being devastated. We go through trials because we know that God's going to get us through it. Somehow. And when we're faced with impossible things, I sit back and I say, God, I don't know how you're going to do this, but I love to watch you flex. And something happens. And it gets done. We're all here today after we've faced many, many severe trials in our lives, and we're here. We made it through it. May not have seemed like it when we're in the middle of it, but we, have, we know that we're going to get through it. Look to the Lord and His strength, not yours. We can do all things through Christ, right? Why would we worry? The Bible says, don't worry, it ain't going to add a day to your life. We don't need to worry. We know God's got it. Yeah. I'm not worried about this election. We're going to be right in the middle of the furnace if it turns out the way it is now. But look at Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. God did it. Seek his face always. If you're seeking his face, you're not seeking yours. God told us to seek his face always. Remember the wonders he has done, past tense, his miracles and the judgments he pronounced. Verse 23, sing to the Lord all the earth, proclaim his salvation day after day. Not just Sunday morning, day after day. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous deeds among all people. 
It starts here at home, guys. We can't go out there and tell people what God has done if we're not showing what he already has done in our lives. You can't go out and claim the victory to somebody when you're not claiming it for your own life. Right? For great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. He is to be feared above all gods. We've all we got all these little gods that men have created. You know, I, I, all these little shrines and stuff that some churches put all along the walls of their church. You know that and, and worshiping that kind of stuff. Man, what have we come to? For all the gods of the nations are idols. But the Lord made the heavens. Splendor and majesty are before him. Strength and joy in his dwelling place. Didn't think I mean to be there. Have you guys, do you guys ever figure, think about, I mean, I am always blown away at how God listens to our prayers. Intently. It's going to be the same thing when we're there. It's going to feel like it's one-on-one -on -one with God in heaven. That's how powerful he is, how big he is. I'm looking forward to hanging out with Jesus. I am, man. Verse 28. Ascribe to the Lord. What does that mean? A sign O families of nations, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Guys, our minds can't even wrap around that. Because it, he's so magnificent that we don't even understand the amount of glory that's due his name. Bring an offering and come before him. Worship the Lord in the splendor of his holiness. Do you know that when we received Jesus into our life, we received his holiness. As imperfect as we are, God looks at us as holy. Does that blow you away or what? It's the mistakes we make because he looks at us through the blood of his son. He doesn't see any of our mess because it's been washed away. God is so powerful that he can not remember. He casts our sins into the sea of forgetfulness and remembers it no more. I'm thankful. I'm thankful. I'm thankful that I can step out boldly and proclaim who he is, not who I was. I'm glad. Worship the Lord in, his, in the splendor of his holiness. Tremble before him all the earth. Reverence him, right? The world is firmly established. It cannot be moved. It is what it is. And ain't nothing going to happen that God don't allow. Right? Let the heavens rejoice. Let the earth be glad. You guys ever heard that song? It's a praise song. Let them say among the nations, the Lord reigns. Let the sea resound. Well, and all that's in it. It's all there because God put it there. Those deer you guys are out there killing, God put them there for you. Yeah. Let the fields be jubilant. See, see, as you go out there and plant that garden, right? 
and everything in them. Man, there's a whole lot of food comes out of that little old place over there, you know? Then the trees of the forest will sing. They will sing for joy before the Lord, or he comes to judge the earth. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Another praise song. Guys, today, it's all about drilling into you gratefulness, thankfulness. You're not going to hell. How cool is that? You can't go to hell because of what Jesus did for you. I tell you, man. Cry out, save us, O God, our Savior. Gather us and deliver us from the nations that we may give thanks to your holy name, that we may glory in your praise. Praise be to the Lord, the God of Israel, from everlasting to everlasting. Then all the people said, Amen, and praise the Lord. Guys, it don't matter what the enemies of God do. We said, look through Scripture and see what God has done to His enemies. Right? Sometimes He let them flourish for a while. Don't be concerned. I mean, don't be beat down by what's happening to our nation now. God's got it. God's got it. We survived the 2008 election. We're here. Let's rejoice and be glad. Let's love each other. People are going to wonder what makes them guys tick over there. It's because we love each other. You know? We do. Let's pray. God, thank you for the love that you've given us for each other. Lord, may we never forget the reason that we care about each other so much. And that's because of the love of Christ that's in each one of us. It's not about anything that we have done. It's about what your son did that has created us to love each other so much that the world can't accept it. Well, Father, uh, may we be grateful every day, not just Thanksgiving Day, but every day. May we as assign to you glory every day. Lord, as we're coming nearing the end of this part of our fellowship together, Lord, I pray that you bless the offering, Lord, that as you always do, you stretch it out no matter what it is. We're grateful for that, Father. Lord, instill in your people a desire uh, to support our church. And God, as we're uh, getting ready to eat together. What a great time. Every week we get to eat together and laugh together and sometimes cry together. But God, it's sweet fellowship that we share because of you and what you have done in us. Thank you for that, Father. Bless our food, Father. May it give us health and strength. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.